Hi everyone, my name is Robert with the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium, and I'm here with my pal Kristen, and we're here at Great Salt Lake checking out brine shrimp. Hey everybody! You know, brine shrimp are amazing creatures. There are trillions of them living in Great Salt Lake. These teeny crustaceans are similar to creatures found in the ocean, like krill. Krill? Like what whales eat? Exactly. In fact, did you know a single blue whale can eat up to 40 million krill in one day? So in that case, if brine shrimp are technically like krill, could a whale theoretically live here? You know, that's a funny question. There's actually a myth about whales in Great Salt Lake. They say some guy in the late 1800s decided to introduce whales into the lake because they thought it would bring a lot of tourism. Yeah, as I heard it, it was two 35-foot whales from Australia. Believe it or not, some people still claim to see whale spouts out in the distance. So what do you think? Could there be any truth to this myth? Um, maybe, possibly. Um, maybe there was, but I... I think a 35-foot whale is pretty big to fit in the Salt Lake. It needs a lot of room to swim around. I'm Actually, no, I changed my mind. Because there's no way you could just get two whales into the Great Salt Lake. I don't think there's many other things living, maybe like tiny little insects and things like that. But I don't feel like there's anything for like the whales to like chow down on or anything. So I don't think that's legit. I don't think so. I don't, you think, don't it's think it's possible. So? Mm -hmm. You don't think it's possible at all? Why? Maybe concentration of salt, different environments, you're taking one animal from its one habitat, adapting it to a completely different elevation. I don't know. It just doesn't seem plausible. Great Salt Lake and the ocean are both large bodies of salt water. Lots of animals can survive in salt water, but they need special adaptations. Let's have our friend Laura take us through a few examples. Hey, thanks guys. You know, marine animals have some very cool adaptations to help them deal with salt water. For example, let's look at penguins. When penguins eat, they dive down into the ocean and open their mouths to catch fish. But as they do this, they also swallow salt water. To deal with this, penguins have glands located behind their eyes that filter salt out of their blood. Penguins will shake their heads, releasing little salt-laden droplets of snot all over their buddies. Oh, dude, gross. Another example is sea turtles. Sea turtles spend their entire lives swimming in the ocean. They also have glands behind their eyes, but unlike our penguin friends, sea turtles get rid of the salt by crying tears. Sea lions also have a way to deal with salt. I'm here at Hobo Zoo in Salt Lake City checking out their seals and sea lion. Sea lions don't have glands behind their eyes. Instead, they hold salt in their bladders where salt levels can be up to two and a half times more salty than seawater. And when their bladder gets full, they get rid of it. Wait, how do they get rid of it? Well, think about it. What do you do when your bladder gets full? Oh. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the help, Laura. Let's get back to whales. All whales spend their entire lives swimming and eating in the salty ocean. Like our sea lion buddies, some whales have teeth and eat fish. But really big whales, like those in the myth, have something called baleen that helps them to catch and eat those little critters called krill. Like the brine shrimp. Exactly. Each time a whale feeds, they swim up from underneath a large group of krill. They open their mouths really big and take in the whole group in one big gulp. It looks like they just swallowed a bunch of salt water too, but before they swallow the meal, they first spit out most of the water and the krill gets caught up against the baleen. But they can't spit out all the water, so some does get swallowed with the krill. The salt in the water gets filtered through the whale's super-sized kidneys. Whale kidneys are built for this job. They are capable of filtering large amounts of salt from the water that is then stored in extra long tubes in the whale's body. These tubes function like bladders and, as in our sea lion example, get emptied when full. Each of these animals have adapted to handle the amount of salt they take in. Based on what we just talked about, let's re-examine the myth. So we know whales can filter salt water, and if they can adapt to eat brine shrimp, then they should be able to live in Great Salt Lake, right? Well, before we begin stocking the lake with whales, let's take a little bit of a closer look. Great Salt Lake is the remnant of Lake Bonneville, a great ice age lake that covered about 20,000 square miles of what is now Utah. The lake had abundant life, including fish swimming through its depths, and amphibians, waterfowl, and other birds inhabiting its coastal marshes. After the ice age, the Earth's climate became drier and Lake Bonneville receded to form Great Salt Lake. Now it's one of the saltiest bodies of water in the world, in part because water flows into the lake but never flows out. It just evaporates, leaving behind all the salt and minerals that are brought in by rivers. Bottom line, the lake is really salty. But you might be wondering, is it too salty for whales? 
ocean water has an average salt to water ratio called salinity of about 3.5%. Let me show you what that looks like. Would you mind taking that? Thank you. Now on the other hand, Great Salt Lake fluctuates in salinity and it can be as high as 28%. That's nearly nine times saltier than the ocean. So, do you think a whale could live in here? Maybe if its kidneys were nine times as big? Yeah, that's still way too much salt, even for a whale's huge kidneys to handle. So, mystery salt. No whales in Great Salt Lake. But where did the myth come from? Let's see what our Great Salt Lake expert has to say. The myth of Great Salt Lake whales came from an article back in about 1890. Uh, the Utah Enquirer printed an article about um, whales in Great Salt Lake and how 15 years earlier whales had been planted in the lake. Uh, there's no truth to that. Uh, whales can't live in this water. Uh, it was probably a little bit of satire in that article. So what does thrive in the lake are brine shrimp and they are a really important food source for the millions of migrating birds that come through here every year. The birds gorge themselves on that as they migrate north and south um, on their pathways. Not only are they food for millions of birds, but they are well adapted for life in the lake. They absorb salt through the lining of their stomachs and pump it out through their gills. That's what allows them to survive in Great Salt Lake. So, moral of the story is animals are best suited to the environments in which they have naturally adapted. Thanks for joining us today. It's fun to explore the mysteries of our natural world, especially in our own state. But it's even more fun to discover the science behind them. Be sure to join us next time as we explore, discover, and learn more about the wonders of our living planet.